Would you please stand if you, as you are able as we recite the Shema and hear the reading of the Gospel. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Hear these, this reading from John 3, 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may be, not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I recently picked up, uh, picked up again, uh, N.T. Wright's uh, book on Paul. Uh, it's about 1,800 pages, so that's the reason I put it down in the first place. I was, I was kind of overwhelmed. But I came across this quote, um, and it's from Seneca. And the quote is, The human heart is more complicated than easy solutions allow. The human heart is more complicated than easy solutions allow. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the dark. He tells Jesus that, that Jesus comes from God because someone who, only someone who comes from God could do the works of power that Jesus is doing. Jesus responds to this statement with, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Now, at first, this seems like a strange statement, doesn't it? It's, it's, it seems like Jesus is being maybe a little obtuse or like Jesus and Nick are talking past each other. But I think that Jesus is telling Nick that he's on to something. That the mere fact that he can see that the things that Jesus is doing come from God is a starting point. That he is responding to the light in a, in a positive way. That he's starting the process of being born again. This is a, this is a new concept for Nicodemus. I mean, he already has the right pedigree. He was born into the right tribe, the tribe of Abraham. He's, he's a Pharisee. He's a religious leader in the Jewish community. He knows the scripture. Jesus goes on to tell Nicodemus that the first birth was not enough. The first birth into that tribe, the birth, the first birth wasn't enough, that he has to be born of the water and the Spirit. And this, this throws Nicodemus because, after all, he's got all those right credentials. What's, what's worse is that he can't control being born of the, that being born of the Spirit part. 
You can ask, you can seek, but it's God's work. And Jesus puts it this way, that the wind blows where it wills. I have a friend, uh, and it, he's been a friend since I was in high school, and after we graduated from high school, we rode motorcycles to Colorado together, but that's another story. He was the best man at my first wedding. And I went through this conversion experience, and I told him about what had happened, and I, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if we had the same experience? And I took him to a prayer meeting, and, and I controlled him, and I put some pressure on him, and I prayed for him, and he wasn't buying it. He wasn't looking on the man who had been lifted up. I prayed about it. I prayed for him. I thought, God, when is this going to happen? And I received a prophetic word that he would come to believe later in life. Later in life. I, he's going to miss so much. But I stayed in touch with him. I dropped by to see him every so often. I had him over to the house for dinner about once a year for, you know, that, that's 30 or 40 times now. And a few months ago, he called me. He wanted to come by and visit. We kind of missed connection, and, and a couple of months later, he called me back, and he came by, and he told me, rather pleased with himself that he had decided that he's a Christian. I thought, well, finally, I'd about given up. I wanted to say, what took you so long? The wind blows where it wills and when it will. It's in God's time. Have you noticed that? It's in God's time. It's not in my time. N.T. Wright says this about water and water baptism and spirit baptism. He says, the two are closely joined. Nobody in the early church supposed that spirit baptism mattered so much that you couldn't do that you could do without water baptism. From time to time, though, the problem arose of people assuming that as long as you had water baptism, you didn't need to worry about the new spiritual life. But the point in this passage is that this double-sided new birth, which brings you into the visible community of Jesus' followers, Water, water baptism and gives you the new life of the spirit welling up like a spring of water inside you spirit baptism was now required membership in God's kingdom indeed as Jesus says in verse 3 previous to the scripture we read today without it you can't even see God's kingdom. You can't glimpse it, let alone get into it. As the conversation between Nick and Jesus continues, Jesus throws out this strange statement using the passage from the book of Numbers that, that was the Old Testament reading today. The Israelites had a problem with snakes. Poisonous snakes, biting them and killing them. And God tells Moses to make this bronze snake and put it on a pole so that the Israelites can look on it and live. This is a strange book. After this incident, the, the bronze snake is kept in the tent of the meeting, the tabernacle. That is, until Hezekiah discovered that the people were worshiping the snake on the pole. And he smashed it to pieces. 
see, Jesus is referring not only to the Israelites' problem with snakes, but to our problem with the snake. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. I'm sure that Nicodemus is going, what is he talking about? But Jesus goes on to tell him that he was sent into the world by the Father, not for the purpose of condemnation, but for salvation. All you have to do is believe. But that's not a static belief. It's not a noun, it's a verb, it's active. It's an active form of belief. It informs how we live, it informs how we see the world, it informs how we interact with people, it informs how we live our lives. It shapes what we do. In fact, it's the only way to really, really live. You see, the, the problem is, the problem is, is that we've all been bitten by the snake. And we have that venom running through our veins. It's not that we, that we have sinned, but that we are sin. But because Jesus died on the cross, he took that snake bite on himself. And out of that, we make a miraculous escape into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus must have walked away from that conversation with Jesus with, with all these thoughts running through his head trying to, to make sense of what Jesus said. He, he, he must have gotten it because the next time we see him is at the cross with Joseph of Arimathea collecting Jesus' body to give it a proper burial to put it in a proper place. N.T. Wright says that the point of the whole story is that you don't have to be condemned. You don't have to let the snake kill you. God's action in the crucifixion of Jesus has planted a sign in the middle of history. Look on him and believe. It's the only cure for a snake bite. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me in the response to the word? Though we were lost in our wrongdoing, God leads us from the shadows into the light of God's lonely. Though we were as good as dead, God leads us from death to life. God sent the human one into the world, not to condemn, but to save. Thanks be to God.